Today, my talk topic is the footsteps of Korean IT. So this is the agenda of today's topic. Uh, first, I want to introduce the information technology, and I want to introduce briefly about Korean economy and IT industry. Then Sony, Samsung, and Apple. Um, these three companies, I think, did, uh, represent each country very well. And I want to uh, explain why I picked these three companies and where they are stand. Uh, this was my first computer I um, got as a present from my parents when I was in high school. I think uh, this brought me into the area of uh, engineering. So I uh, play with this computer. First, I didn't have any idea what to do with this computer. Actually, this one has a you know, floppy disk driver, but this one was very, very expensive at that time, so I didn't even have that. So I had uh, um, the body computer system as well as the monitor, and I have a tape reader. So it takes about 30 minutes to loading a very, very small program. So you uh, play and loading the program, and 30 minutes later, sometimes successful, sometimes not. That was the early 1980s and late 1970s. Um, last month, I think everyone knows by now, um, Apple CEO Steve Jobs uh, passed away. And that is kind of reminding me of memory because he and Apple um, kind of old nostalgia um, remind me how I get into this field as well as um, Apple and uh, Steve Jobs make a tremendous impact in the Silicon Valley and the IT technology industry as well. So that brings me some memory. So um, what is uh, information technology? So I just uh, reading from the uh, dictionary, the technology involving the development, maintenance, and use of computer system, software, and networks for the processing and distribution of data. I think an important concept um, explained here what I can think is hardware, software, and service. But eventually, all these three things, is, it doesn't need to be exist without data. So all of these exist only for the processing the data. What you need is the data and information. That's what you need. When you search from the web or when you query some information, what you want is to get an answer or analysis so it's, this is all information related. Information is sometimes intangible, but it also gives a tremendous impact because without knowledge, you cannot act and you cannot make a decision. With the proper information and data and analysis, you can make correct decision. And this will be a big impact in the industry and, uh, um, and therefore. Okay. Uh, next few slides, I want to go explain how the technology is involving. I'm an engineer, so I cannot do with, without some chart. So next three um, slides will showing the microprocessor trend. So this x-axis shows the uh, timeline from 2000, uh, 1971 through 2009. And the y-axis is the uh, uh, chip speed. Uh, actually, chip speed and performance not directly uh, relational, proportional, but this is okay as um, um, explaining the, how microprocessor performance is evolving. So 1971 is the first year Intel um, introduced the first microprocessor, which is the 4004. And after that, like a 8, 880 and two, uh, Pentium and 386 and so forth. I didn't put all the name there, but what you can see is um, it's a continuous increasing power and performance uh, evolving through the years. You may notice that later in 2000 uh, time period, we almost getting flat. So this is one of the important things. Uh, we are still uh, improving and enhancing technology, but we are getting close to the physical limit. So. That is the one area of interest. Okay, this is the second slide shows the number of transistors. 
So uh, they were the very first microprocessor, which was very, very simple, only a um, few thousand transistors there. Right now, the state-of-the-art modern microprocessor is way over one billion transistors. Some of the chip we worked on is, I think, four billion transistors now. So the dimensions uh, is uh, extremely small, which is size is about the fingernail. And still we have about four billion, five billion transistors in that tiny chip. Uh, you may heard about nanotechnology or micron technology, something like that. So um, y-axis is the uh, size of technology, which is a 10 micron is the biggest one. 10 micron is still fairly, fairly small. So human hair is about 100 micron. So that is the one tenth of human hair. So right now, the modern technology, we are about 28 nanometer, 20 nanometer technology, which is about one four thousandth of a hair, human hair. So that's a tremendously small. You cannot see in human eye. You only can see like an electron microscope. You can barely see. So this is the dilemma. We are heading to, to almost the 10 nanometer right now. Um, many scientists and engineers um, see that there is a barrier at 10, 10 nanometer technology. We are going into the now quantum mechanical area. The dimension is so small. So if you go beyond that region, I mean, I cannot say we cannot break, make a breakthrough through this uh, limit, but it'll take much more effort and some innovative um, technology will need to come out in order to break this barrier. So that is one reason we are going into kind of flat in the last few years. And I think it'll take much more years to see the next breakthrough to go beyond. Because this is not just a simple thing. We want to um, change everything, like uh, from machinery and the measurement and all the technology and the following machine and equipment all need to be changed. And this is the uh, load, no, never be taken. So nobody knows for sure. So we, there are a lot of trial and error. We try like one um, theory and going one way and eventually found out there is no way out. So then c coming back to another way. So. There are many research uh, ongoing in parallel, so in order to make uh, this breakthrough to happen. So next few slides, I want to um, show some some of the um, product of the time that um, by decade. So 1980, actually 1970, there are still some product there, but I was too young, so I cannot remember any of those much. So I start from 1980. So, do you know the Walkman, this one? This was um, um, my generation iPod. So we didn't have iPod at that time, but Walkman was so popular. It came out when I was junior high and high school time frame, and everyone wants one. And this is um, kind of cream of crop that, that day. And uh, what we did, so, if you and me are close friends, we uh, tape recording some of my favorite music and give it to you as a present and kind of vice versa. So this kind of a uh, lot of um, um, slimness night, press recording and make a list of songs and give to the close friend. So. And the right side is um, a Macintosh computer. I, I put um, Macintosh, but it's in general personal computer or Macintosh. So before 1980, um, computer was like a big uh, bulky machine and um, ordinary people cannot have one because usually companies or big schools like to have a computer that individuals cannot have one because it's extremely expensive and don't know how to operate it and there's not much uh, service or program available for general use. But in 1980s, uh, IBM introduced the personal computer, uh, and the Apple introduced the uh, Macintosh. Suddenly, the personal computing is booming. So, and the price of personal computer is going down tremendously. For the initial offering, it was a few thousand dollars at that time. So, it wasn't uh, cheap at that time. It's like the cost of a car, automobile. 
that relatively speaking, after a few generations and a um, few decades, the price dropped tremendously. So now you can buy some good quality computers, three, four hundred dollars. That is amazing, actually. But car price is still going up compared to two decades ago. I think a computer and electronics is the one um, part of industry. Prices are keep dropping, performance is keep improving. So these two combine these two effects. This is uh, tremendous. Let's move on uh, 1990s. Um, so probably you can remember some of those. Um, the very uh, left side, this is the mosaic, uh, which is the first web browser uh, developed by uh, Mark Anderson. And later, it was evolving into Netscape. And Netscape becomes um, uh, Firefox and Mozilla right now. But this is the very first um, uh, web browser. There was before, but this was the first graphical interface uh, web browser. So in general public, they can, this was the only way can access the um, uh, internet. Um, it was started like the 1992, 93 time frame, and 94, 95 internet starting to getting popular. But uh, at that time frame, there was not many websites and uh, information available, but so still kind of a pretty esoteric uh, nature of uh, internet. Only some early adapters and um, engineers and college students have experienced that, but not that popular. But after um, later 1990, the internet exploded because so many uh, internet ventures came, eBay came, um, and um, Yahoo, and a lot of uh, internet business came. And you probably remember there was internet bubble, late 1990s, 2000. And Silicon Valley, that time frame, um, it's, it's like a party everywhere. So you get a um, good sign, sign on bonus and uh, a lot of uh, big bonuses and everybody talking about retirement in um, 20s or 30s like that. Stock price uh, keep coming up every day. So it doesn't look like uh, there is no ending. It keep going up that way. But um, everything goes uh, up has, has to be go down. So um, after um, 2000, early 2000, 2001, economy uh, going downward. And a lot of uh, those internet companies went to, uh, out of business, bankrupt, and that happened. Um, second one is, I believe, a laptop computer, uh, which is actually pretty advanced form. The first one I saw was um, in college in 19, late 80s, which is, was not really laptop. I can say it's a loggable computer. It's about 20 pounds or 25 pound, um, but with um, like a seven inch screen. But it was uh, amazing that time when we saw that, wow, computers can be moved around. Uh, that was a, a really big stuff. The rightmost one is um, cellular phone. Um, I think the, those are the generations of cellular phone. The very first one I still remember, that one is about two pounds. So it's not really a, um, uh, small phone. It's like a size of brick. But it was so expensive, so you probably pay, um, I don't know how much it cost in here, but in Korea it was about um, price of automobile. You can buy a, a car with the debt price. So it's kind of a symbol of uh, rich, richness or affluence at that time. Now, year 2000 and 2010, I think uh, these are familiar to you. I think iPod and uh, a lot of the social networking service, Facebook, Twitter, and um, iPad, and iPhone, they're coming. Myself haven't um, experienced the Twitter, but I saw a lot of people using the Twitter and the Facebook. Um, my kids are using Facebook every day almost. Um, I also signed up, but I didn't use them much. I just realized that I didn't respond to them. Last Christmas, um, <laughs> we posting yet. <laughs> yeah. um, Facebook, I originally thought this is um, a small thing that looks like it's much more involved. Then I think there is a potential to grow uh, more. So, pretty new stuff. Okay, um, this one shows the um, last 30 years um, top. 
10 companies, uh, top IT companies, uh, from ranking number one through ranking number 10, uh, which is a worldwide ranking. So 1990, uh, IBM was top with a 65 billion uh, market cap. And you may notice that, so 1980s, the Japanese economy was booming, and a lot of um, Japanese companies enjoyed a lot of um, a profit, and they are kind of conquering the world. Uh, Year by year 2000, I think the picture changes totally. You can only see um, mostly U.S. companies and a few uh, European companies, Ericsson and Nokia, which is a communication company. And top is the Cisco. I think the reason is uh, this is right after internet boom. So Cisco and the networking company enjoyed uh, tremendous growth during that period. Year 2010, now the picture totally changes again. Now Apple is on the top. IBM still there, hanging around. Um, I think IBM is the only company for lasting three decades. All the other companies, all Japanese companies are gone. There is none single Japanese company in top 10 list now. And mostly American companies um, occupying the top spot. So what does it mean? Um, I think from we can see some kind of trend here. In year 1990, mostly hardware-oriented companies are ruling. Very high market cap. IBM, Hidachi, Panasonic, all Japanese companies are mostly hardware manufacturing companies. By year 2000, a lot of the networking and communication companies are surging. By year 2010, now small software oriented, uh, they Apple, Microsoft, Google, Oracle, um, they are all um, software oriented company. Apple still uh, making product uh, manufacturing, but Apple also has a tremendous uh, software portfolio as well as their own platform. So the, I think the trend is going from hardware to software or combined, uh, fusion uh, thing is um, going trend. Let me go a little bit more detail in the next slide. So what will be the next? Uh, from the trend and year 2010 and beyond, uh, nothing for sure, but um, this is the sum of the trend I can observe from right now. First thing is the rapid growth of uh, personal uh, individual communication devices like iPad, iPhone. So the computing device used to be it shared by a lot of people. Now the personal computer usually shared by one family. Now it's going down to individual. So the cellular phone and the iPad or iPhone nature it's more like a personalized device. It's yours, not shared by anyone else. So you will have uh, more devices from like a PC, one per family. Now it's uh, one per individual. So you will see how many times it will be, um, can be solved, solved this one. Second part is uh, you may heard about cloud computing uh, and the utility computing, I put them together because cloud computing and the network, uh, utility computing by nature is a similar concept. It's not um, by the concept itself, but those two are um, inseparable. Those two come, come with each, each other. So cloud computing is, um, you have a uh, computing and the information is stored in the cloud. Cloud can be accessed anywhere. So it's like a cloud in the sky. You can see the cloud all over the, word, right? So that's why you can access from anywhere. You can access it from here. You can access it from Korea or going to some other countries. You can still access the data. One example is Google, like a webmail. It's kind of form of a cloud computing. You can think that way. You can store your photograph or your music stored in the cloud. You can access it anywhere. You don't need to worry about losing the information or data. If computer crashes, your hard disk vanishes, your data will be all gone, right? So that's why 
keep asking, you have to back up, back up the data. But if you have a cloud, you don't need to worry about it because your data is in the cloud. Yeah, of course, the cloud also fails, so, but they have their own backup system, so it's much more safe compared to the individual uh, system. Next one is uh, utility computing. Uh, the concept is not new. Um, some 10, 20 years ago, people are keep talking about utility computing because all other things is uh, pay by use. Like uh, your electricity, you're only using maybe one hour in a week, but you still need to buy a brand new computer, buy a software. That is a tremendous investment up front. Regardless of you, how much you use, you can use in whole day, or maybe you can use in only one minute per day. Still doesn't matter. You have to pay the full price of the system, software, mm -hmm. and service. So why we need to do that? Because electricity, you only pay what you use, right? So that's why the utility computing coming from. So we'll take care of everything, infrastructure, setup, machine, service, software installation, we'll take care of it. You only pay how much as long as, long as you, you use it and pay uh, that amount of money to us, then we'll take care of the rest, which is utility computing. So hardware may be lent or leased, we're just using it, and they might upgrade the machine, depends on their um, uh, situation. But you only need to pay whatever you use. You use this month maybe $10, next month $20. So this is very flexible. And I think um, finally we are going to that direction. Say your cell phone. So you probably get a new phone, like a free, free phone, right? But you still have to pay like $60 or $40 a month. Sometimes, some months you're using more, then you pay more, right? But when the two-year contract expires, you may get a new phone, right? So it's more like a utility computing concept. Okay, um, third thing for sure is um, ubiquitous uh, networking. It's a, a Latin word for connected everywhere. If you can uh, check your network search from your PC, on PC, how many devices are networked? You may be surprised. There are so many devices in the in your home will be networked right now, but it will only grow even further. In the future, maybe your fridge or your car or your air conditioning system, heater, they all connect to each other. It's home automation. You can control your uh, heating from outside of your home or you can check your security camera from internet anywhere in the in the world. That is going. That is happening actually. So you will only see the connected devices keep increasing, actually exponentially growing. So that is the one reason we have uh, changing the internet protocol from the earlier one to the new one, new standard, because we are actually running out of the uh, address. So if you keep the current system, we cannot address anymore. You cannot connect because you need address to, to get connected. It's like an area code. You, you get too many cell phones or telephone numbers. You can already exhaust all the area code, um, the numbers. Then you have a new area code to get a new one. It's a something that concept. So next one is, a, this is the second part I want to uh, introduce about the Korean economy and the Korean IT. So. Korean economy was uh, totally destroyed after the Korean War in 1950 through 1953. Um, I wasn't even born that time, so I only heard from my grandparents so how they suffered and how cruel that was. So by late uh, 1950s, um, people, Korea was uh, still one of the poorest countries in the world. So um, I I just realized that in 1957, Korean GDP was about the same as a Ghana in Africa, which was like $150 per year. Um, I think it was 1990 um, amount level of money. That was uh, only 15 billion of the total Korean GDP in 1960, and capital was $500 per year. By year 2010, um, Korea GDP is $1.5 trillion, which is number 12 in the world. 
and per capita is about thirty-one thousand uh, dollars. This is a PPP uh, purchasing po uh, power parity number. And export is uh, uh, number six in two thousand ten and number eight in import. I saw a newspaper article that Korean um, import and export exceeding one trillion dollar last year, uh, this year actually. So. This data is a little bit one year old, but Korean economy is a keep rapidly growing. So uh, Korea becomes a member of OECD and the DAC and the uh, ODA, which is actually a uh, division of OECD. Um, used to be a group of a developed nation. And this committee is the DAC and ODA is a country which actually um, helping the uh, underdeveloped country. So Korea became the first country ever, um, starting from the country who was supported by the OECD, now became one of the countries who can support the underdeveloped country. So uh, Koreans are very proud of it. And um, it's all a very thankful to the uh, US help during the Korean War and the 16 countries help. Without the help and the Korean War and Korean economy wasn't here right now. So why Korea? Why um, you may heard that Korean IT is uh, looking into Korean market. Then why they are so interested in the Korean market? And we are talking about the Korean IT. Um, I can think about several factors. First thing is uh, Korea is a very ideal test bed for the IT industry, which is uh, one is the people factor. We are about. 48, 49 million uh, people, a little short of 50 million, but very tech savvy, um, similar to Japanese. Um, ideal consumer for the electronic company because they buy a new product when a new feature comes out. So, but US consumers usually don't do that. They replace when they are not functioning or maybe um, on need basis. But the Korean people and Japanese people they like to buy a new gadget when the new feature coming out and with a good quality, they'll buy it. So as an electronic company, that's um, best consumer. They built a new product and it will sell. Um, second thing is uh, we have a very good infrastructure, um, which is a very high internet uh, penetration, broadband internet and mobile service, one of the top uh, in the world. And Third factor is uh, a lot of population is clustered in the small concentrated metropolitan area. For Seoul, for example, about 20 to 25 million people uh, reside uh, in the Seoul metropolitan area, which is about maybe um, Los Angeles size, uh, county size probably. But think about that. There are 25 million people are living in that small region. Um, so it's much easier to deploy uh, network service to that small region. So you also get a very good um, return on investment. You invest that much of an uh, area, then you got a good subscription and then a lot of uh, money, influx money. Compared to US, US, um, yeah, there are pretty dense, densely populated area, but also there are very sparsely populated area like Montana or so North Dakota like that. That area, you still need to um, invest a lot of money for the networking, but you only expect a very small um, return on investment. Um, and I think this is uh, probably the next one will be the most important factor. Um, the size of the market. Korean economy is the uh, largest in the world, which is not the biggest market, but not the smallest either. And which I can say is a medium large size economy, which is, I think, good test bed. If you only test for the very, very small niche market, you may not experience some, some um, density issue like or other difficulty issues. So the other word, if you are only testing for the big country like China or America, then it's also difficult because investment money, testing money might be too much. For, as a test, uh, testing purpose. So I think Korea is a very good size, sizable economy and um, expecting a good return on investment. That is uh, one of the reasons 
uh, Korea is very popular for the, a lot of IT companies test bed. Okay, um, yeah, this last part is uh, funny, but um, it's cultural factor. They cannot wait. So um, I heard that um, as foreigners came to, uh, coming to Korea, the first word they learn is bali bali, means uh, coming up faster, faster. So they all learned that very first and, and when uh, they came to Korea. Actually, the Korean people used to be very relaxed and um, uh, laid back people, but I think um, the Korean War uh, make that effect because uh, during the war period, you have to act fast in order to survive. So um, that I think probably, just, this is just my theory. <laughs> So next slide, I want to um, discuss about few Korean IT milestones. This might not be uh, very well known, but um, I think these are the important factors how Korean, Korean IT industry came here today. The first one is the TDX. Uh, TDX is the um, all digital um, exchanger, which is a telecommunication device. Before the TDX development, we rely on 100% from import from US and some European countries, which is uh, actually connect to the uh, one telephone to the another telephone, so kind of a digital exchanger. TDX was, at um, uh, that time in late 1970s, it's a very state-of-the-art product, and only very few countries can make it. Uh, and it compared with the analog um, system, this one has a tremendous um, capacity. But this was a relatively new one and high technology at that time. Korea was that, that developed that 1970s. So this was a big risk and big challenge, but they make a big investment. And for about 20 years, that um, 1976 to 1975, uh, this was a um, great achievement for the Korean uh, companies and Korean IT industry. The, they felt that they can do it. So for uh, developed three generations of a TDX, and eventually they uh, replaced all imported the TDX system in Korea. So that became one of the biggest impact in Korean industry. Okay. Um, next one is uh, broadband internet. In 1990, um, Korea invested heavily on internet uh, superhighway. So that time we replaced the uh, old uh, electrical system with the uh, fiber optic at the time and uh, a lot of uh, copper wiring and using a networking system. And that time, uh, internet wasn't fully populated or in, in the coming to the picture. So there were many objections why should we invest that kind of money to the internet superhighway. Next item is the CDMA development. CDMA is a um, uh, cellular technology. Uh, does anyone know CDMA technology? Verizon is using it. So this was um, developed by Qualcomm, which was a small venture company in 1989 and developed um, CDMA technology. This is a code division um, system. Compared to the CDMA, uh, there was a TDMA, which is a time division one. Uh, compared to TDMA and CDMA, uh, CDMA has a greater capacity, about 10x, and uh, TDMA only like a 3x compared to the analog system. So CDMA has a great potential, but that was um, only theory and no other countries as a mass um, commercialized the deployment of CDMA at that time. But Korea made a big bet. So they decided in 1992, they go to the CDMA system for the next cellular. So they co-developed with the Qualcomm and few Korean big companies also, as well as the government uh, research institution um, jump into the commercialization of CDMA and they uh, make it in 1996, January, the first country ever to commercially deploy a CDMA service in the world. Uh, after that, uh, CDMA, I think Qualcomm also became a big company nowadays. Um, Korea, I believe, is about one-third of the revenue of Qualcomm. 
because entire Korean market is a CDMA right now. And we have about 50 million subscribers. So one person, one cell phone. Everyone has one. And cell phone is a kind of a, uh, everyone has like a personal watch. So basically everyone has one, even the small elementary school kid, they carry one. So that was amazing when I visited Korea in a few years back. Um, next one is a semiconductor, uh, DRAM and flash memory. Uh, myself also involved in flash memory, so mm -hmm. that uh, gives a lot of um, uh, pride. So flash memory, we started the design in 19, uh, late 1980s, and we discussed about someday we'll have uh, music to store in the, this flash memory, or someday people can take a picture and uh, store the picture into this flash memory. And that thing happened in um, 20 years later. So that gives um, a tremendous thing. Um, the last one is the display technology. So LCD and LED technology. Um, the last one is um, uh, organic uh, display, OLED, which is uh, using for um, small cell phone. But Korea is the probably uh, um, 95 or 97 percent market share in the world. So Samsung is the only com company who can manufacture OLED successfully right now. Eventually, they'll be more popular. Okay, uh, I got to speed up. So next few slides I can go up quickly. This one just shows the uh, internet speed around the world. Um, I just copied it. So if you look at Japan, is number one, 61 um, megabps. US, about four, four megabps on average. Korea is number two. Some um, information I saw, Korea is number one. Some Japanese, Japan is number one. But I think Korea and Japan, one of the um, top two com companies, uh, countries in the world, pretty fast. And it was amazing, actually, um, when I visited Korea, several years back, and my parents' um, house didn't have internet at that time, so I called the company to install the internet. Uh, they came on the same day. I called about 10 a.m., and they gave me, uh, I'll be there like 12, 15 p.m., and they came, they gave a 15-minute window, and they came right on time and installed like 5, 10 minutes, and they're gone. And the speed I measured it, uh, pretty fast, about 20 megabps, which was like uh, in T1 line here. That means the company speed. So that's that's amazing. This one also showed the uh, uh, mobile phone manufacturing. Uh, you can see the Korea, one of the red dot. Um, Korea is a small country, but um, in the IT industry, which is not small. Yes. Uh, Korea company's um, market share. The first column is um, DRAM. Uh, Samsung and Hynix are um, enjoying top two market share in the world. Second one is a flash memory. Um, Samsung is also number one. Third one is LCD. LCD is uh, very, very competitive these days. Um, Korean company, Japanese company, Chinese company, they are all uh, struggling to claim the number one spot. What makes a difference between Japan, Korea, and the U.S.? Um, three things, uh, I think, think several things. First thing is the risk aversion um, culture. Japanese are similar. I think Japanese is the um, um, strongest, and Korea might be in between, and America usually like a more risk-taking um, thing. Workplace culture, I think which is widely known, we more like a hierarchical way and look at for the, uh, whether they are older or more experienced, so like a more hierarchical way. The U.S. organization is more like a flat or horizontal way. Um, the last thing is the Galapagos syndrome. Um, may, you may heard about this. Galapagos is a small island, which is a um, um, big kind of evolution um, in that area only for that specific area. So they are very different from anywhere in the world. Japan is, and um, Korea is uh, probably classified as that. Japanese consumers and Korean consumers very like, uh, very picky about the electronic equipment and uh, thing. Not only that, but especially for electronics. So uh, especially Japanese market is 
pretty big. So even though they are not exporting for the, um, another country, Japanese electronic company, they can survive because their domestic market is still big enough, they can survive. But Korea is a different story. Korea is uh, too small to survive just serving Korean domestic market. So that's why Korea becomes like more um, open and going uh, externally to go outside. Um, there are a few Korean IT innovations. Um, so the first thing is a digital media player. Everyone think um, iPod is the first one, but there were a precursor before that. Um, there was called the MP Man. It came out in 1998, but um, it wasn't um, well organized system and software hardware wise. So iPod kind of ruled the world after that. Second thing is the SNS. Uh, there is called uh, I Love School, which is very close to Facebook, I can say. So this was a phenomenal success in Korea in nine, late 1990s. So before that, after graduating um, elementary school, middle school, high school, and they don't know where they are going now. But this one kind of connects people together. So there is kind of a um, school reunion and a lot of things happening. They meet together and um, yeah, that was phenomenal. Cyword is an interesting thing, uh, which is a kind of a small web page and you can uh, buy and sell um, some uh, virtual product. So you can construct your own, um, it's like a, what do you say, um, second word. You can make an avatar or your, your avatar and you can decorate the avatar. You buy a car, virtual car or virtual clothing and um, the exchange and the buying and selling in the virtual world is actually not small, interestingly. So there are a revenue generation inside the world. But it wasn't successful in the US. It was introduced in um, early, 19, uh, early 2000, I believe. But uh, Facebook is um, also uh, overall. So 4G network, um, which was um, called the Vibro, uh, became the international standard. Uh, this is mobile Wimax by IEEE, and it was introduced in US uh, by Sprint, but uh, it wasn't widely accepted. I think um, 4G is going to happen with LTE, long-term evolution. So this is another technology that um, the market trend is going for that direction, so that also will be fair, looks like. Voice over IP is an internet uh, telephony. Uh, Dialpad also introduced in 1999, that um, also didn't make a successful market penetration. And Skype and the other internet provider is um, successful. Okay, I'm gonna sp speed up. So next few slides, I wanna compare Sony, Samsung, and Apple, three companies. Um, you can look at the uh, statistics. So this is a consumer giant. You may know like Sony was synonym for the TV set and the transistor radio, Walkman. They have a very, very strong um, skills and uh, technology. I think uh, I can say um, Sony was the king of analog devices, analog technology. Uh, nobody beats um, Sony at that, that time. Um, Sony Trinitron and it's much more expensive, but people all want to buy that. And the quality and the um, uh, skills, uh, nobody can beat Sony that time. Next one is Samsung Electronics. Um, this is a different kind of company. Um, compared to Sony, this is more like a conglomerate, right? so which sells everything. Uh, Sony is more like a consumer uh, TV set and um, audio devices like that. Samsung virtually manufacturing everything you can buy in Korea. So from uh, smallest um, um, toothpaste all the way shipbuilding. So you can buy apartment of Samsung make. But this is an electronic company, but even electronic company itself, they make uh, appliances, refrigerator, washing machine, and cell phone, semiconductors, and all kind of things. So, and they became um, grew very quickly, and I think their strength is manufacturing specialty. They are very good adopt and mass manufacturing, 
I think by mass manufacturing capability wise, uh, nobody beats Samsung. They learn very quickly and they make it very effective to make a mass manufacturing. Okay, next one is Apple. Um, Apple is another uh, interesting company, uh, which is, uh, I think, represent American culture as well as um, American innovation, which is a tightly integrated and a very strong company and very innovative company. Now it has the largest market capitalization in the world, the largest IT company, and uh, the profit generation machine. If the profit is amazing, as you look at the hardware company. Um, so three companies, what, how do we compare? As I mentioned, Sony was a um, very strong technology during analog time frame. But they, because they were king of analog uh, nature, they kind of slow to adapt to digital technology. Samsung was second rate or third rate company by the analog uh, time frame. So they were desperate. So they cannot win in Sony during the analog technology uh, period. So they invested heavily in digital technology. So in 1990s and uh, forth, digital technology, Samsung, just reversed the trend. Samsung became kind of king of digital technology. So in digital technology, it's a totally different from analog world. Analog, there is a, a very good product and a low product. Digital, it's very hard to distinguish. I mean, either it's one or zero. So that means if you, as long as you make one, it's very hard to tell which one is better than the other one. It's very hard to tell. So with a good design and good uh, price performance wise, then you have an um, advantage to win the market. So Samsung uh, generate a, a great success in digital technology. Apple in the 1990s and 2000, uh, they make a great stride introducing a new brand new product, iPod, iPhone, and iPad. This is a segment breaking new product which wasn't existed before. And all very successful. So the next one shows the snapshot of 2000, I believe this is a 2010 or 2011. So the green bar shows the total revenue in billion, billion dollars. And the orange bar shows the profit. So this is after the operating expense and everything. This is a pure profit, excluding everything. So profit-wise, Apple profit is the best, um, about $26 billion profit. Uh, Samsung is next, $14 billion. Sony lost $3 billion. Um, I think uh, that year, Sony is uh, still kind of restructuring efforts right now, but I think eventually Sony will catch up. But I think this will show some kind of trend. With just hardware, cannot survive or cannot make a good profit. So in order to make a um, good profit and to survive, we have to combine. So these three graphs shows the uh, three companies' uh, brand price. I mean, uh, in the interbrand, which uh, they analyze the brand, um, the price of the brand, how much the uh, price will be the, uh, to the brand. And the yellow line is um, Apple. They are increasing very rapidly lately in 19, middle of 1990s. They are catching up and passing Sony and Samsung. Sony is kind of downward trend. Uh, Samsung also went up, but kind of a flat right now. So I think that is one of the reason um, um, software um, only company and hardware only companies that cannot make a big strike these days. So the last slide, this is my last slide. Uh, this I just copied from the, one of the jobs presentation. Um, I'm very impressed with uh, this slide, uh, personally. This is the same thought I had a uh, long time. So technology itself, I, can, I don't think will, there is a, a purpose to existence. So technology exists to help other things, liberal art or helping the uh, human life or everything. So technology itself is not the purpose, but it's only the medium to make a better life, better future, liberal art. So I believe 
Jobs want to stress that. So technology and liberal arts is um, it's not different concept. They have to combine together, fusion together to, to accomplish things. 